I'm sharing with Deputy um, Joan Collins. Uh, I'm delighted to have this brief opportunity to, to speak in support of Deputy Brophy's uh, National Famine Commemoration uh, Day Bill 2017. The bill before us, of course, is almost an exact replica of the earlier Sinn Féin bill, the Famine Memorial Day Bill, which also called for the setting up of, an, of a National Day of Commemoration uh, on the second Sunday of May each year. Uh, it's quite shocking, really, I suppose, last can, when one thinks about it, that we don't have a set National Day of Commemoration to mark uh, this greatest tragedy ever to befall our people on Gortemore, where one million people perished and another million fled our shores, and, and perhaps down to the early uh, 1850s, uh, maybe two, two and a half million uh, fled uh, to become the Irish diaspora. Of course, we did have famines before that, like in the 1740s and so on, uh, but it was the, the timing, I think, and the horror, true, you know, incredible horror of the events of the um, um, 1840s, uh, which marked a truly iconic uh, watershed, I think, in, in our history. Uh, I remember when I was doing history first uh, in UCD with, uh, I think, Professor Art Cosgrove um, and, and Professor Dudley Edwards uh, being asked to read Connolly's Labour in Irish History. Uh, and James Connolly, of course, did a brilliant analysis uh, of the vicious landlord and capitalist system which created uh, the terrible social conditions, um, you know, which facilitated and led uh, to the famine and, and aspects of which uh, uh, Deputy Boyd Barrett ha has referred to. Uh, but, and since studying the famine, I think, as a student, um, I've always had a revulsion, uh, last can I think, for the British Liberal Party, uh, despite the efforts, the later efforts of uh, W. E. Gladstone to deliver Home Rule uh, in the Parnell period. It was, of, co <coughs> of course, uh, Lord John Russell and the Whigs, the Liberals' predecessors, who absolutely refused to address the starving hundreds of thousands of our ancestors in 1846-47, in particular in that terrible winter, and 1848-49, uh, and put their trust, of course, uh, indeed, in the invisible hand, the so-called invisible hand of Adam Smith, and even the, the uh, Sir Robert Peel, of course, and the Tories, um, as uh, viciously landlord uh, uh, and, and unionist as they were at the time, um, uh, they, they, uh, they, they at least, uh, um, in the, their period up to 1846 um, had uh, purchased corn, uh, although we didn't eat it, uh, and, and, and have s set out some basic mechanisms to try and, and address the famine. But the Tories and the subsequent uh, the Russell Whig government, uh, uh, they failed completely, of course, to take care of our starving nation. Um, and, and as we know, they would have addressed uh, such a problem had it been in Yorkshire or uh, Lancashire or Northumbria or even in Wales or Scotland. Uh, they treated us fundamentally different, uh, differently. And even their response to the rampant disease, of course, which took away uh, so many tens of thousands of our ancestors and which inflicted the poorest uh, families across the land of the West and South and, and the Midlands. Uh, it was appalling, given, as my colleague has said, of course, the United Kingdom was the greatest power on earth uh, in, in, at that period uh, where the, where the, uh, the map uh, was it was covered, I suppose, in, in large part, in uh, significant parts, in red, and where the sun never set on that empire. Uh, and I think uh, following the sectarian carnage, of course, inflicted on our people uh, by the landowning uh, ruling unionist caste in the 1798 uh, war uh, that lasted up into the, the uh, early part of the 19th century, uh, a war, by the way, uh, last can, so reminiscent of what happened in Yugoslavia and the Middle East, uh, the famine then subsequently, I think, had marked a clear dividing line where Ireland had to be an independent nation outside of Britain. And if you look at the ferocious determination of people like James Stevens and his successors, down to Thomas Clark, the real uh, originator of the 1916 Rising, and the IRB, of Michael Davitt and the Land League, and Charles Stuart Parnell uh, and, and the Parnellite Party, it all flowed from that appalling uh, event. So I believe in Memorial Day, a Memorial Day, uh, for this Irish Holocaust is entirely fitting to remember the million plus of our people who died so tragically and the two million, and later I suppose you could say last can up to six and a half, seven, eight million who fled this country uh, to safety in the US, Australia and Britain. Um, it's also a day, of course, it would also be a day to say and remind ourselves that never ever again <coughs> should our nation be in thrall to outside powers who don't give a damn about whether our people lived or died. And it's particularly relevant in this time of Brexit. 
Brexit. Of course, obviously, uh, other deputies refer to the diaspora and the importance uh, of the, 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 the diaspora. So I believe the reasoning uh, set out by Deputy Brophy for the bill echoes some of the same sentiments put forward by Sinn Féin uh, and uh, Deputy Pather uh, Tobin uh, last year and today. And these important reasons include acknowledging the historic significance of the Great Famine <coughs> in our history and to allow for the greater integration of this annual commemoration into school curricula and the diaspora. Uh, so I welcome the bill and uh, I believe it is fitting that we would have this Memorial Day on the same day each year last can. Thanks. Thanks.